Hey everyone. Today we're going to discuss how to design APIs using Postman. Postman gives you a lot of great tools to help you get started with sketching out a blueprint of your API. We're going to review creating an API using the API Builder, using API definitions, validating APIs, and generating API documentation. We're currently looking at the API Builder within the Postman platform. Here, since I don't already have an API created, I see a link that says create an API which I can use. However, I can also start by either clicking on the plus icon at the top left or by clicking on the new button at the top and then selecting API. Either way, I'll be prompted to change the name from new API to anything I want. So I'll type in space objects and hit enter. Next, I can connect a repository if I have one. Using my repository allows me to keep the code in my repository in sync with any changes that I make to the API definition within Postman. I can see that some of the options are disabled because they're only available in the desktop version of Postman. However, I'm currently using a web version of Postman. I'm going to move forward and select the GitHub repository. I'll be prompted to authenticate. And since I'm already authorized, I'll just close out this tab and go back to Postman. Now I can follow through with connecting my GitHub repo. I'll select my organization, and then select the repository I want to work with. And then I can select the initial branch that I want to work with, or I can even create a new branch right within Postman. Then I can let Postman create a new directory for schemas and collections. Or if I already have these folders within my repository, I can select them within these drop-down fields. Then I'll connect my repo. Now I'll be able to view the overview page of the API. Here I can add a summary and a description at the top. For the description, I can use the Postman editor or the Martone editor to add a description that will help my team better understand my API. I can even insert tables, images, and so forth. This page is also where I can add associated collections and create my API definition. On the right side, I also have the option to set up tests and automation, add API performance monitoring, connect my API gateway, and publish my API. I can also see that my definition is currently connected to the main branch on my demo API repository. Now I want to build my definition. I'll click the Create Definition button at the bottom. And here I'm given the choice to either import definition or create one from scratch. If I try to create definition from scratch, I'll be given a choice of definition type and format. This will create an empty definition for me to use. However, I can also select the checkbox that allows me to use a boilerplate template to work with. But let's say that I have an API that I'd like to import instead. So I'll hit cancel, and then I'll click on import definition. I see that I have a lot of options to choose from. I can import from a local file or folder even using multiple files or folders, since Postman supports multi-file API definitions. Multi-file API definitions are supported in OpenAPI 3.0 and ProtoBuf 2.0 and 3.0. I can also use a link that points to definition, paste in raw text, import from my repository, or select my API gateway. Now I have a definition in my repository that I'd like to import. So I'll click on code repository and select GitHub. And again, I'm already authorized. So I'll just head back into Postman. I'll select my organization, my repository, and my main branch. And I'll hit the continue button. Now I'll import the definition. Once I create the definition, I'll be shown my definition YAML where I can start working within the imported definition. At the top, I can see that the type of my definition is OpenAPI 3.0 and that the format is in YAML. On the left side, I can review the servers, the paths, components, 
and security from my definition. At the right, I have an icon for source control. If I click on this icon, I can review any changes that have been made in Postman so far, and I can push these changes up to my repo. I can also review the commits on my main branch. I'll add a commit message. and push the changes up to my main branch. Now Postman has notified me that the changes have been pushed to my repo, and now everything is in sync between my API in Postman and in my repo and main branch. Now at the bottom here, I can see that I have some violations since Postman also validates my API definition in real time. If I click on it, I can see that I have a syntax issue around line nine in my YAML file. If I click on the violation, the platform will automatically take me to the line in my definition that's causing an issue. I see that I've accidentally left out the slash at the beginning of my path. I'll add that back in to clear up the violation and save my changes. And I'll see that the syntax violation disappears. If I switch over to the rule violations, I'll see that I also have some governance and security violations that I'll need to fix as well. For example, I need to define my security field. If I go to the top to add this field in, as I start typing, the API Builder will also auto-suggest properties that I can add to my definition. Postman makes it really easy to see if my API definition is aligned with my team's API guidelines in real time and offers suggestions to fix the violations. Since I just made a change to my API definition, I'll go back to my source control and add another commit message and push it up to my branch. If I go up one level into the definition of the API, I can read through the API documentation that Postman has automatically generated for me. The documentation lists the server and description, the various paths and operations, any path variables that I might have, as well as the responses, the body and headers, properties, and any examples that I might have included in my definition. Again, this is all automatically generated just because I've used the API Builder to create my API within Postman, so I don't have to worry about creating this manually. As I make changes to my definition, Postman automatically updates the associated documentation as well. Additionally, anyone who has access to my API in this workspace can also review the API documentation to get more familiar with the API. To recap, we've reviewed creating an API using the API Builder, using API definitions, validating APIs, and generating API documentation.